Welcome to Sales is Not a Dirty Word, the show that proves if it's a fit, it's a fact. I'm your host, innovative sales coach, Alicia Barr, the creator of the Black Sheep Sales Method. If you're a service provider selling your own service and you're ready to sell differently than the mainstream status quo to convert eight out of 10 sales conversations without having to act like a douchebag, then this is for you. If you want to know more about the Black Sheep Sales Method and how to apply it to your business, then go to aliciabar.com. This episode is with Jeff C. He's a renowned international speaker and expert in visual marketing. He wears many hats, hosting the social media news live show and podcast and serving as the creative force behind Manly Pinterest Tips, where he proudly holds the title of Headbeard. With a wealth of experience, Jeff has collaborated with numerous companies crafting and producing compelling content that resonates with audiences far and wide. And he is a total black sheep. And I love his vibe, his energy, and like his methodology, his philosophies. I'm really excited for you to hear them too. Let's go. Welcome to the big show. Sales is not a dirty word. Well, thank you so for having me, Alicia. I mean, I loved having you on my show, which we had a blast talking together about. And so this is just, just continuing the conversation. I'm, I'm so excited to talk with you today. Yes, me too. And I wanna start with your journey. Let's start at the beginning with your manly Pinterest tips, which everyone thought was super weird (laughs) and is also the reason that Jeff has an enormous beard and mustache that he has to talk to people about every time he's in public. That's right. Yeah. So it all started back in the day. I had a, 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 a market agency in town. It was a local thing. I was doing video, long form video for corporate clients. And I started diving into social media because I was helping them with their blog and started doing websites and things. I thought, well, you know what? I need to get on and do a blog or whatever because I'm telling my clients to do it. So I was driving back from, I think it was my wife's family and I was listening to a podcast and it was the Social Media Examiner podcast with Michael Stelzner. And he had a girl on there named Cynthia Sanchez and she was talking about Pinterest was driving all this traffic to her blog. And I'm like, hey, I have a new blog. I need traffic. I'm going to try it out. So I started using Pinterest to, you know, create things and point back to my blog. And I wrote this article called Manly Pinterest Tips Number One. It was kind of tongue in cheek. It was kind of funny. It was about sharing a secret board with my daughter. Well, it kind of went semi-viral and like people started talking about it. And and Pinterest, and it still is to a little bit, but it was really this back in, in, in the day, was considered the girls network. And it was mostly the United States that was that way. Europe, it was it was okay. But for for the United States, it was very like a lot of braid tutorials and, you know, stuff you put in mason jars, that kind of, it was more of the female <laughs> uh, centric thing. And I got on there and started doing these kind of things. I actually, it was in the wild west of Google plus I started a live show with four other guys and it took off. We had a bunch of people and it was when live video was first coming out and I got people like Guy Kawasaki, who I produce his podcast for now, but like the producer of Little Pretty Woman and Under Siege and all these people came on the show and it kind of blew up and that got me a job with Social Media Examiner and that kept, you know, it just kept spiraling and spiraling and I had a Manly Pinterest Tips podcast and website and it's just, that's, so everything started with Pinterest. I knew I had to set myself apart a little bit. I said, you know what, I'll try this for a year. I'll grow a beard and that will help me stand out. And it's been, gosh, has it been 10 years now? And yeah, so it's the beard, it seems to be part of the brand now and it's here to stay. Yeah, I mean, there's no getting away from it. And that comes with all kinds of stuff. Obviously you need to, yeah, like you gotta worry about like eating food and like grooming Ribs, it's really hard to eat ribs now and ice cream cones, just you can't do it with a beard. Yeah, like you need to do that in private. Right, yeah, it's um, not pretty, it's not pretty. But I love that, I mean, it's a great example of a recognizable brand. And obviously you were able to see the correlation with, oh, this Manly Pinterest tips thing got traction. What if I took it a step further and made it even manlier with facial hair? Mm -hmm. And not everybody has that like branding mind to spot something like that. However, they do there are a lot of opportunities where people see something and they share the idea with somebody and they say, don't do that. So did people tell you like, why are you on Pinterest? Like that's weird. I had, had I actually have an email somewhere. The lady told me, get off my platform. Like they just told me like to get off. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's, you know, and so 
but then you like the NFL is on there. There's boards. There's all sorts of things there. There's a, a you know cigars and whiskey and there's all sorts of that kind of stuff on Pinterest. But yeah, when I first started, there was people like, "What are you doing? Why are you doing that?" Yeah, and there's always going to be people who do that. And it seems like Jeff had a similar approach to life and people saying shit like that that I have, which is like, mm, I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> right. And I'm going to figure it out for myself. And it's paid off in, I mean, how much traffic do you get from Pinterest every month to this day? Jeff? Yeah, it's still my biggest platform. So I have, I think right now, it's close to a million views a month. Or it may have dropped a little bit, but I think I have 40,000 followers on Pinterest. It's my biggest platform. I mean, that is wild because he didn't listen to people. He he followed his gut and tried something and didn't listen to people saying it was a weird idea or saying get off my platform. And another area where this really paid off was when you were getting into social media and building an audience. Obviously, you built one on Pinterest and that's very much paid off. But what was the advice that people were giving you when you were first getting on social? You were getting overwhelming advice about so yeah, so I always so when I started doing the live show and the the podcast, I was one. I'm lazy, <laughs> and so it was easier. I'm like, if I do instead of just doing an audio podcast, why don't I do video and I can have it for both things? I can do it for YouTube and all those things. And so I did that, and then I also went everywhere. Like I was able even back then to try using the technology, and you had to jump through some hoops, but go multiple places. Which everybody said, no, just focus on one. And I was like, once again really lazy, but I can do it at all these different places. And so I was going to do that. And that has paid off too, because even now it's, it's even easier than ever before. Like I can go, when I do my live show, as I go, when you were on, we went everywhere, like LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all those different places, groups. And so people can consume content now where they want. Like some people like YouTube, some people like to watch on LinkedIn. And so uh, I want to go where the, the people are and where they're most comfortable. And yeah, I got a lot of flack, like, no, you need to concentrate on just building it on one platform, just do YouTube. And I'm like, but some people don't like YouTube. So that's another way I push against the grain. And, and especially when the world shut down with COVID and people were at home and they could watch wherever they wanted to, it just, it turned out really, really well for me. It helped grow my platform. And, and uh, yeah, even now you're still getting advice, like just stay on one. And I'm like, but if you're doing a live show, why not go to everything if you can just press one button? Well, and also, you know, we talked about how, you know, platforms change algorithms, they change, they close your accounts, like to have all your eggs in one basket is a little scary. Yeah. So one of the things that I've been blessed to be able to do is like, I've had lots of companies who say, hey, we need content. Can you go into our channel, like our Facebook group? And I'm like, yeah. So I, I mean, even companies that who have hired me to do the show or were sponsors of the show, they say, we can't sponsor you anymore. And I'm like, hey, can I still go on your channel? And they're like, yeah, that's great. We need the content. So that has been really great as well. But to your point that the algorithms changed, like Facebook is shutting down the API access for groups. Like it's going to take, it's going to be a lot harder now to stream into all these different groups. There's some workarounds, but once again, to your point, you never know what these platforms will do. Like you just don't know. I, I mean, I do a lot of stuff on Amazon Live as well with product reviews and things like that. And they are always janking with the algorithm. And like you will have a huge month and then all of a sudden you'll get like two viewers. And so when you can diversify, it just, it eases those, you know, times when, when the numbers go down or you get, you know, knocked off a platform or something like that. So once again, I just, I love diversification. And I'm all about repurposing. And I know we've, we've talked about that a little bit, but that's the other thing is like, I really believe that creators, they give up too early. They like leave content on the table. They don't squeeze all the juice they can out of it. And so that's another thing I've done from the very beginning is like, I, try, I would rather repurpose one piece of content than move on to the next piece. Yeah. And by repurposing, can you explain? Yeah. Just so for like, for example, for, for when you were on my show, like you, you mm -hmm. did a great job, but it was like an hour. Like a lot of people don't have time to watch it for an hour or they're, they may not want to invest in somebody like, I don't know who this Jeff, this hairy Jeff dude is. Why should I spend time listening to him? So what I like to do is I found out from when I interview people, like a good question and then an answer, you know, it's usually about, a, you know, a two minutes, maybe two, three minutes. If you just take that piece out. And so what I like to do is take you know, Alicia's on my show. She says something really great. I ask the question and she answers and I have that clip and I put it everywhere. 
because that lets people know like, oh, Alicia's really smart. I should listen to the show and maybe I'll go listen to the whole thing or maybe I'll follow her or maybe I'll follow Jeff. And so that's what I talk about when I'm talking about repurposing. And then I also, I, I have a blog that comes out of the show. I have, you know, all these multiple clips. I easily get three to five different pieces of content out of the show. I have a podcast that comes out of it. So like I said, I try to always, I'm looking for new ways to squeeze all the juice that I can out of that piece of content. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's so lazy. It is. I'm very lazy. I'm so lazy. (laughs) So, I mean, you said something when we talked before I brought you on, Mm -hmm. like when they zig, you zag. And this is a really difficult approach or mindset for people to adopt because, you know, you naturally want to be part of the herd. Everybody's doing this thing, so it must work. We all need to do it. Mm -hmm. And it served you well and me well to zig and zag. And for example, like I, we were talking a little bit about this. I've talked to multiple people recently who have had some type of coach, whether they were even like a life coach or a mindset coach, not even necessarily a business coach, sometimes a business coach say double the price of your offer. And then their sales drop because it was based on literally nothing except probably the coach before them telling them the same thing. Right. And it's like so upsetting. And and you were saying like you've always you've always asked why. Yeah, I I my thing is like okay, why is and I think most more people instead of trying to copy something that you like you see a guru or somebody you look up to do on their socials or their channels or whatever is try to think of like okay, what's working for them and can I reimagine it for what I'm doing? Like why is it working for them? You know, why in, Why in, when I posted this, did people stop and seem to get more engagement on this piece? Or why did, why did they really comment on this piece of content that I put out there? So I'm always trying to figure out why. Like, why is it working? Why is it working mm-hmm. for them? Why is it working for me? You mentioned, you know, these gurus who are, a lot of times will say, you know, double your prices or whatever. And it brought to mind one of my good friends, Liz Wilcox. And funny thing is she's actually on Survivor right now. She's one of the contestants, but she's amazing wow. email marketer. Yeah. And I've known her for a long time. And her thing is, is she started a community and she charges $9 and she gives so much value in there. She does email templates for people. She's a big email person and it's, you join a group for $9 a month, but she has 4,000 people in there paying $9 a month. So she did what everybody else told her not to do. Is like, you need to charge at least $47 for this, this course and then upsell and all this other stuff. She went, nope, I want to do it this way. And she, if you look at Liz, she is very much her own person. She wears 90s gear. She's got a headband. She's just super cool. And she did it her own way. And, and she has been super successful at that by ignoring what other people said and doing what she felt like she wanted to do and serve people the way she wanted to serve them in her own community. So that's, that's a really good example. I think of doing it that way. Another one, everybody's talking about AI right now, right? Like I I, Mm -hmm. listen, I, once again, lazy, when AI came out, I I did everything. Like I was using it to write my emails and do all this different stuff. And for my show, I mean, it makes a lot of things easier. It really does. But just recently, and this is because I'm a member of Liz's community, I quit doing that for my emails. I used to kind of had a template that AI could take and it would take my Mm. show and it would do all that. So recently I've quit doing that because everybody's doing that. And I want to have my weird quirky voice come through my email. And I've done that now. And I've seen my, my email rates shoot up because I'm doing that once again, Mm. zigging when other people are zagging. Yeah. That is such a beautiful mantra to live by. And if, Everybody, I hope everyone listening can take that and apply it in some way to themselves because it will produce so much more success every time if you are doing something different. And it feels so scary in the moment. And also just asking why. Why would I do it that way? Would that work for me the same as it works for that person? And I mean, just like you were like, why did manly Pinterest tips work? Well, probably. Because it's for girls, everybody thinks. Right. So let me right. just take it further and see mm-hmm. if that is why. And then you learned it is definitely why. And right. you were able to stand out so much because of that, just asking the question, why? Mm-hmm. And, and, and when people give you advice, which there's a lot of unsolicited advice online right now. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they'll say it to you in, in text content, but also in verbal conversations. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you heard a lot, people were telling you verbally not to do things, right? And you would ask them, right. well, why? Mm-hmm. And, and what would and they say? They would, they would give me all sorts of reasons. <laughs> now, here's the thing is when, when they would, you know, they'd tell me no. And I, I, I have been very blessed to have a group of people, colleagues, friends throughout the years that I can take ideas to or things I'm working on to. And I trust what they say. They're not just yes men. They're not just, you know, they're not negative Nellies where they're going to say yeah, no to everything. They're really good people and they help me. I have like, I feel like I have a team around me that I don't pay, but are friends and we help each other out. So for example, like when I first did Manly Pinterest Tips, I had this great logo. It's got a logo with this guy with a beard and it was really great. It was on this blue black background and, and I sent it to my friend and she goes, no, it's, I mean, the blue was like, it looked like I was slowly choking a Smurf, if you know what that, I mean, it was just a nasty <laughs> blue. And the, she said, listen, Jeff, I mean, it's a great idea, but that's just, it doesn't look right. And so I could have got mad, I could have got whatever and said, I'm gonna do it my way, but I, I trusted her. I trusted what her design style, I knew she wasn't gonna blow smoke up my skirt. And so I just knew that she was telling me the truth. So when you have those kind of people, those truth tellers, but, but your friends, who want the best for you, that's where you can succeed as well. But once again, it's not just a, a take, take, take thing. It's a give thing as well. And and when you have those, am I really thinking why about this stuff? That's one of the things that I, I, I think you really, having that close group of friends is really, really great. Yeah, so having that group of people that you can really trust, it's actually, it's funny you say that because I, you know, have recently gone through hiring my next EA and I really love people in the Philippines and I have somebody who's amazing at vetting and finding people in the Philippines because, you know, if you have the right person looking for you, they are very, people are mediocre in every country. Okay. You need to vet no matter what country you're looking in. And it's like, one of the things is they're sometimes not always, they're kind of yes men. It's part of their culture. So one of my questions was like, are you going to tell me if you think something I'm doing is off? And if they even hesitate, I'm like, no, not a bit. <laughs> mm. I need somebody to honestly tell me if something is off. I would add a little something to what you said to say, I would just ask a few more people instead of just one to find out like, okay, did everyone think that it looked like you were choking out a Smurf? It sounds like she suggested the choking out a Smurf and you saw it and you were like, I get it. I see it. I don't need to ask anyone else. And she has enough design skills that I knew that she knew what she was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree having those people that you trust. And, and I think what's scary about the online industry, giving this advice a lot of the times is that somebody's paying them for this advice too. And they're giving this advice like, that doesn't align with them, but they think, oh, but I paid them money. So I have to listen, even Mm -hmm. though it feels not right. Do you have any experience with that? Like with investing in somebody who told you something that didn't feel aligned? Yeah, I've been, and I can't remember the exact quotes, but Chris Brogan said something. He's a big blogger and he's like, you know, quit reading bad books, quit staying in masterminds that you aren't comfortable in, you know, life is too short. And that's kind of the way I, I think too. And I've, I've been in like paid masterminds that I've gotten out of because I'm like, this wasn't worth it. Like, but I, you know, I've also stayed in masterminds that I should have left a, you know, a long time ago. When I talk about masterminds being paid to have a group of people that help you kind of go to the next level in your business. And there's a ton of those. And, and honestly, I've, I've been in one that I've been in for almost 10 years now and it's great. I love it. It's what I need. And it's, I, I, if you can find a good mastermind, and it works, you know, stay with it as long as you're continuing to get value out of it and you give value. So yeah, I totally, it's, it's finding the right people to listen to. And, and now it's a little bit easier because there is some time that has gone by with the interwebs. Now you can kind of go back and see people's story. Like people can go back and say like, oh yeah, he does have like followers on Pinterest. Oh yeah. He's been doing YouTube for X amount of years. I mean, they can go back and see that. So do your due diligence, you know, because a lot of times, if you dig a little bit past the, you know, the surface, you'll go like, yeah, they just made that up. Or yeah, they're not as successful as they say they are. Because, you know, we were talking before, like th- everybody likes to say they have, you know, I, I made six figures doing this, but you know, they may have spent like 500, you know, I mean, like five figures to, to get there and they're not really making profit. Like I want to hear the profit numbers. You and I talked about that. It's like, yeah, they may sound great, but where are you making the, the money from? 
Yeah, just always ask questions. And I do notice that sometimes, and I have had this experience too, when somebody has a lot of followers or seems to have a lot of success, mm -hmm. they go a bit more unquestioned. And they also have a way of making people who might not have big numbers or success yet feel small. Yeah. They make them feel small. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't know what that person's future looks like. You don't know who that person knows. Like everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. Be kind to everybody. You and I think the that there's... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, just that dynamic, I think sometimes. I love that you listened to your intuition and didn't let any dynamic like that or the fact that you were investing in it or whatever cloud what you knew in your gut was right for you. Right. And and you can see those people too, like you mentioned, anybody who talks down on you, you don't need to be spending time with them. Like I've had, like the one thing that like my kryptonite is I hate accounting. I hate everything with taxes. I hate any of that stuff. That is not me. And so I remember having an accountant one time that like would talk down to me like, what? and I'm like, I'm paying you to do my, don't tell me that, like, just do my, my taxes, dude. And so don't, if somebody's talking down to you, you do not need to stay with them. If you're in a mastermind group where it feels like everybody's ganging up on you and not really helping you go to the next level. And it's just like, they're dogging on you, leave. You're, I mean, especially if you're in a paid one, like get out of there. If you, it's just, you know, we don't have time to be toxic. And so uh, to be in a toxic relationship. So like leave those things and, and surround yourself. You wanna sound, surround yourself with people who will make you better, not the people who will just take from you, but people who really are, you know, there's this, you know, quid pro quo that you're going back and forth, helping each other out. Like that's what I have found that has boosted my, my business the most is people who are really wanting me to succeed and I really want them to succeed. And we just kind of work together in that way, helping each other out. I'm like, you know, like, Hey, I've got like, you know, for example, Katie Brinkley, who are, you're really good friends with, and I've been on Love her show Katie. a couple of times. Yeah. Yes, she's amazing. And so like, she came and said, hey, Jeff, you need to have Alicia on your show. I'm like, oh yeah, if Katie says it, I'm gonna do it. Cause she, I trust what she's saying and how she's doing it. And the same way, like I reach out to her, we go like, she's like, hey, do you know this person? Can you make an introduction to me? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. Those are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Like, there's not this, you know, I'm gonna keep all my secrets and not let anybody know. And I'm, those are my guests. I'm not gonna share my guests with you. That's not, and so many people do that, especially when they're starting out. And if you can get over that hump and really start thinking about ways that, you know, being different than everybody else and being maybe more giving than everybody else, that's another way to get uh, set apart. Yeah, that's true. And I do have some people I trust implicitly and I tell them, all right, I, I'm going to do it because I trust you implicitly. Right, right. And they know that. So to sum it up, zig when people are zagging or zag when people zig. Have a trusted group of people who are not yes men and ask mm -hmm. why. Ask questions. If you're looking at investing in somebody, if you're looking at taking a strategy, if you're looking at taking someone's advice, ask some questions first. And that is all incredibly solid advice that I just do not hear enough. So that's a good stopping point for us. And we've reached the end of yet another episode of Sales is Not a Dirty Word. Thanks again to Jeff for making an appearance as our guest today. And can you tell everyone how they can find out more about you or how they could work with you? Yeah, you can find me at jeffc.com. That's J-E-F-F. S is in Sam, I E H, I before E, especially in C, com. You can find me there. And I've actually got a special that I, I made just for you guys and your listeners. There's a free course that I offer. It's all about using Pinterest and AI, like how to create great images on Pinterest using AI. You can use it for other, it's, it'll, it'll go through other platforms as well, but mainly I focused on Pinterest. But if you go to jeffc.com forward slash pin AI, you can get that free course. And I'd love for you to see you guys at Social Media News Live. We do a live show every Friday at 10 a.m. Central. Yeah, and that show is so legit, you guys. Jeff is really, really good at what he does. Got great questions. He like prepares ahead of time and like very thorough and structured. And it's not gonna be like a rambling conversation by any means, but one that really provides value and insight. And it's just fun because obviously you can tell Jeff's a fun guy. So yeah, well, I think you know, but you know, it's always nice to hear it again. So thank you all for listening and we'll see you next time.